And now about Shakespeare's most perfect plays, the romances, dramatic romances. You know, when I was in BA, I was totally confused. What are romances? What are dramatic romances? What are romantic comedies? I will tell you once again, early comedies, then mature comedies, mature comedies are romantic comedies. Then dark comedies, they are problem plays. And then tragic comedies or dramatic romances or romances. The last plays are tragic comedies or dramatic romances. Did you understand? They are neither tragedies nor comedies. Not tragedies because horrible bloodshed is not there. Tragic situations are there. Not comedies because it is not full of innocent love and beauty and happiness. It is a little dark. Objectionable characters are there. And the romances are Shakespeare's most mature place with a perfect style, perfect characterization. In the romances, there is a predominant medieval element. Pagan elements are mixed. And music is there. Pastoral elements are there. In the romances, you always see separated families. Wandering people, separated families, shipwrecks and family reunion, forgiveness. A very mellowed, matured perception of life. Shakespeare is also an old man, he is going to retire. One has to grow mature at some point. You can't write immature comedies always. And also remember, tragic comedy is the most important genre. One of the most important genres of the Jacobian period. Shakespeare's great tragedies and dramatic romances were all written in the Jacobian period. It was Edward Dowden who talked about Shakespeare's phases of career in Shakespeare, his mind and art. And he was the man who first called them romances. Which are these romances? Cymbeline, Pericles, The Winter's Tale and Our Tempest. Wait, two noble kinsmen. One more play is there, probably his last play. Written along with John Fletcher. Two noble kinsmen is interesting. It has the same story of Chaucer's Knight's Tale and Shakespeare pays a tribute to Chaucer in the prologue. Did you know that? Come to think of it in Pericles also, Shakespeare brings John Gower, Chaucer's contemporary. Ha, I told you the dramatic romances are medieval. Not only are they set in kind of medieval settings, they also bring medieval writers like Gower and Chaucer. Wait a minute, one more play is there. You're wondering what is that? It is actually a history play, the last, Henry VIII. Henry VIII is an English history play, but it shares many of the features of the romances. Did you get that? Now, it's time to talk in detail about the romances. Cymbeline is set in mythical Britain. Cymbeline is a British king. No, 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 it is not a history play because this is mythical Britain. Cymbeline's daughter is the heroine Imogen. She marries Posthumus Leonatus. His name is Posthumus because his father died before he was born. Imogen marries Posthumus Leonatus against the wishes of her stepmother, Cymbeline's second wife. And because of this, Posthumus Leonidas has to leave after the wedding because the queen is against him. The queen wants her oafish son, Clotten, good for nothing son, Clotten, to marry Imogen for obvious reasons. Inheritance. Posthumus Leonidas goes to Italy. He does something he should never have done. I can never forgive him for this. You know what he did? 
he talked to one villainous man yakimo there trusted yakimo told yakimo my wife is very virtuous okay that is fine but then yakimo told him no woman is virtuous and this posthumous leonatus he made a bet with yakimo how dare he bet on his actually virtuous wife and yakimo goes to imogen's court bet gets into the bed chamber after winning her favor hides inside a trunk or something and then comes out at night looks at her body while she is sleeping goes back to posthumus and tells her i made love to your wife your wife is not virtuous these are the this is the proof these are the things i found on her body terrible 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 and posthumus leona just believes it so bad imogen actually is not the heroine of this play i'm telling you this imogen is the hero of this play imogen disguises as a man fidel travels because she can't stay in the court and imogen goes to a place called milford haven where she finds count belarius this is an exiled general actually he has two adopted sons gaiderius and arviragus you think why are these people coming now the story is almost ending new characters why because these two boys are actually the long lost brothers of simbali tadadang separated family reunion told you na happens and they kill clotten the man who was pursuing emotion samajh rahe ho all these things are tied up together finally emotion forgives posthumus family reunion forgiveness as usual romance ending did you like the play the second play i want to talk about is pericles i'm telling you this this is a very strange play did you know ben johnson friend of shakespeare said pericles is a moldy tale mold means kya hai mold is you know like uh, where you keep bread outside for all, for many days it gets mold na that one fungus fungus <laughs> moldy tale <laughs> anyway it is a strange tale our pericles is in greece he is going to antiac where antiacus daughter he likes but there is she gives him a riddle there is a riddle he looks at the riddle and finds out what is the riddle there is a woman who finds a lover and a father in one body this is incest she wants to tell him that she is the lover of his own her own father horrible things are happening in antiac pericles finds out the truth and he has to leave because his life is in danger then he goes to another place pentapolis pentapolis like penta meter pentapolis five cities there he marries thaisa the princess they have a daughter marina remember mariana mesha mesha marina pericles hey one more important thing is there marina on that character mesha mesha character tennyson wrote a poem tennyson on marina pericles character t s eliot wrote a poem you are thinking okay story is ending pericles is happily married taisa our marina okay fine no way now there is a shipwreck family separated after years they are reunited you are thinking wait wait what is the story tell me once again ma'am repeat it don't worry in the audience also people must have thought like that that is why shakespeare assigned one chorus like character who is that our john gower from the beginning john gower is coming telling the story interpreting the story choral character pericles man and then there is another beautiful tale winter's tale winter's tale seasons nature 
love, songs, music, it is indeed a pastoral play. You might know it is modeled on Robert Greene's Pandosto. See, there are two parts to this play. Do you notice? These last plays are pretty complicated. There are two parts to this play. The first part takes, in, takes place in Sicilia, where the king is Leontes. The second part takes place in Bohemia, where the king is Polixenes. Then, why didn't he just to write two plays? One in Sicilia, one in Bohemia? No way, because there are interconnections. What are the interconnections? These two kings are childhood friends. Polixenes from Bohemia is coming, visiting Leontes in Sicilia. Leontes is very busy. He assigns his wife Hermione to entertain Polixenes. Hermione and Polixenes are together entertaining. After Polixenes returns, Leontes is suspicious. Hermione, did you flirt with Polixenes? Hermione says, no, I didn't. Leonti says, no, you have to be imprisoned. Hermione's friend, Polina, wants to teach Leonti a lesson. She declares, Hermione is dead in the prison. And she says, out of my dedication to Hermione, I am building a statue. Statue is ready. Uh, Leonti comes to see the statue of his wife. Hermione is standing like a statue. How long will she stand? No problem. Leontes very soon began crying. He feels remorseful. There is reunion. So this is a play where resurrection is a theme. Resurrection. Same thing happens in Tempest. People who are believed to be dead come back alive. So that part of the story is over. What is happening in Bohemia? Polixenes is very angry with his son Florizel because son Florizel, who is a prince, fell in love with a shepherdess, Perdita. Don't worry, this Perdita is the long lost daughter of Leontes. Leontes had sent her away to be killed. Oh my God, this man is a real criminal. Trying to kill his daughter. Impressing his wife for nothing. Anyway, this is a romance. Finally, uh, it is discovered that Perdita is Leontes' daughter. Reunion, forgiveness, everything, Bindas. Fine, and a comic ending. That is the play, The Winter's Tale. In these plays, okay, okay, I know we are going to talk about Tempest, but let me intervene before Tempest and tell you something. In these plays, Shakespeare is a man who has overcome all the troubles of life. He has overcome all the immaturities of youth, all the troubles of middle age. And now he's growing old, happily, in a mature manner. He sees everybody. Nobody is perfect. But it's okay, we have to forgive. Life is like that. And now, the tempest. The tempest is a stunning, mask-like theatrical performance. One of the greatest plays in the Shakespearean canon. This play offers a complex view of virtues and vices. You will be surprised to know that in this magnificent play, there is very little plot. There is no suspense. We know everything from the beginning. And then, how is Shakespeare maintaining our interest? In the play Tempest, the Duke of Milan, Prospero, is exiled from his dukedom by his own brother Antonio. Prospero was more interested in his magic than in the well-being of his people. So Antonio is the usurper. Prospero and his little daughter Miranda they reach a far off island and they have been living there for the past 12 years. Prospero was helped by his good, honest um, nobleman, Gonzalo. 
when the play begins prospero is ruling the island don't worry there are no inhabitants there there is only a supernatural being called ariel and there is a another supernatural uh, being called caliban there is a big difference between ariel and caliban caliban was the son of a black witch sikorax she did black magic and caliban is ugly dang cruel immoral almost like the devil whereas ariel is beautiful airy both of them want freedom from prospero prospero tells ariel i will give you freedom if you help me organize something all of prospero's enemies his own brother antonio his one time friend the king of naples king alonso alonso's son ferdinand and brother sebastian all of them are coming after attending alonso's daughter's wedding it happened in africa and prospero uses ariel to create the illusion of a shipwreck and a tempest a tempest and a shipwreck their illusions they, they didn't really happen his enemies all come on shore and prospero manipulates them ferdinand the son of alonso is separated from the others ferdinand meets prospero's daughter miranda wearing his invisibility cloak prospero is orchestrating this romance meanwhile the other men they all come ashore they are hungry they are tired they think ferdinand is dead in front of them there is a banquet food ariel is disguised as a harpy <laughs> but this banquet disappears before they can eat anything meanwhile caliban joins with stefano and trinculo two drunkards from alonso's company and they plot against prospero to overthrow prospero finally alonso meets prospero prospero shows alonso ferdinand and miranda it's a beautiful scene i'll tell you how alonso says prospero i lost my son and prospero says alonso i lost my daughter what prospero means is his daughter has fallen in love with ferdinand and he shows them the young couple playing chess and there is a wedding mask and the play ends with forgiveness prospero leaving the island ariel getting his freedom in a magnificent manner the play ends so you can see that there are so many intricately connected elements that make up this play one important element of the play is of course magic prospero's magic is represented by his books his wand that is what creates the entire play the entire play is an illusion created by prospero's magic there are three major spectacles on stage one is the tempest itself the other is the banquet the feast the third is the wedding mask and prospero's magic is analogous to shakespeare's magic shakespeare's art is his magic prospero's magic is his art it is also significant that when prospero bids goodbye to the island and to his magic it is like shakespeare bidding goodbye to the stage because the tempest is shakespeare's swan song which means probably his last play so this tempest uses the motif of magic of art and illusion of theater the whole island is like theater is like the globe the globe remember is a circular theater and this is an island which is almost like a circle another amazing motif in this play throughout 
is music. Ariel is singing beautiful songs to entice Ferdinand and others for a good purpose. It is good music, but it is contrasted with the drunken songs, the bad music of Caliban, Stefano and Trinquillo. Like music that is good and bad, there is magic also that is good and bad. The good magic of Prospero and Ariel and the bad magic of Sycorax. This is a magnificently plotted play because see the intricate uh, meanings that the play conveys. When Prospero comes to the island, Caliban is free, Ariel is imprisoned. Disorder is reigning and when Prospero leaves the island, order is re-established. So, this is a play that kind of in a beautiful, appropriate manner completes Shakespeare's canon. And a very important theme regarding human nature is conveyed in this play throughout the theme of change. Every character in this play changes. Good and bad, everybody changes except perhaps the arch villain Antonio. There is change in life. You know, <laughs> this is almost like literary theory. Oh, so many things that we read about in literary theory are already there in the tempest. Everything changes like the seasons. Human life changes, human nature changes. You can't compartmentalize good and evil. After all these plays of Shakespeare, after creating villains like Iago, look at what message Shakespeare gives at the end of his writing. Human nature is a magnificent, diverse, heterogeneous entity. Everything is there in it. You can't judge people. That amazing message is what the tempest leaves.